Welcome back to Let's Play Fire Emblem. Probably a good idea to save after uh, defeating General. General Lundgren, Lundgren, however you want to pronounce his name, and. Well, why would I not want to continue playing? So now we're starting Chapter 11. Elliewood is the guy with the red hair, is going to become a main character. Uh, the character you've created is going to be a tactician for that group. And basically we're starting Ellie Wood's campaign and we're going to be meeting up with his friend Hector in chapter 12. And it game wants you to think that you may, might meet Lynn again. I can't say you will or will not, but let's just say if any of these three lords are defeated, the game will be over. But the game will continue if any other units of yours are defeated. So that's okay. But they can never take part in combat again. Say you get a broken leg and they can't help for the rest of the game, you know? So it's been a year since the event of, well, Lynn defeating L General Lundgren and getting, saving her grandfather and everything. So there was a war called the Scoring. Mankind vanquished these dragons with the efforts of eight heroes. Sort of like Jackie Chan Adventures, where there was like eight heroes that vanquished demons and sent them back into like another world, like a parallel dimension that they can't get out of. Has anyone ever watched Jackie Chan Adventures? I mean, as a kid, I was addicted to it. I recently just watched all the way through the whole series, and it's still good. It's as good as I remember it being. I mean, it, maybe it's because I grew up with it, I like it so much, but I think it was a good cartoon series and whatnot. And it's pretty cool that way. So basically, everyone in the country is doing pretty good as far as having a time of peace. It's just a, this is just dialogue explaining all the continents, well, all the countries that are next to each other and whatnot. So the arch, the archsage Athos is said to have retired in the barren wasteland to, of Nevada. Remember that for later, because you're going to be, well, you don't need to remember it, but the game will remind you of it later, too. So, Alib, the whole continent entire, entirely, has enjoyed peace for 980 years. That is far much longer than we can say we've enjoyed, right? Right? I mean, I mean, all, all, all of our countries haven't enjoyed peace for that long. At least as far as I know, there's always some sort of war every hundred years or something. It's crazy. Hopefully there won't be another one, though. You know what I mean? So basically, the beloved ruler, Lord Elbert, has mysteriously vanished. And there's no one who's says where he's gone or whatnot or what he's doing maybe he was kidnapped who knows but there are rumors of his death going around so his son believes his father still lives on and he's vowed to find him this is elliewood yes we've have met him before he helped us get ninian from lynn's campaign what do you mean you don't remember it wasn't that long ago and for ones that do remember good job for remembering i'm so proud of you I mean, there's a lot of people who have really terrible memories. I know I'm one of them, but at least I can remember important things pretty well. So, Chapter 11, Taking Leave. Taking leave? Like, we're leaving? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Cool, we'll leave on his word then, huh? I wonder where we are in all this. I don't see my little tactician guy over there. Yeah, it's time to go. Uh... Don't make promises you can't keep, Elliewood. No, I'm sure nothing too bad's gonna happen to him or anything. You know what I mean? Yeah, he has to be alive. I mean, why would he just leave like that? Eh, yeah, okay. Yeah, we'll get him by your side. If we can. And Isadora is basically uh, his mother's paladin. She can be, I mean... A really great paladin later, if trained right and given the right materials and weapons and stuff. Although I still prefer Marcus over Isidore, it just depends who you train, but I end up using them both anyways. I just train Marcus a little bit more. Marcus, my paladin in this game. Oh, so he sent a guy Lowen. It's well, I mean, he has Lowen traveling with him, and he sent to the village up ahead. Sorry, I kind of spoiled it a little bit. Sorry, I don't mean to do that. I mean, I, I try really hard not to spoil anything in video games, ever, you know? Oh, cool! I'm glad to have you on my side, Marcus. Yeah, I don't want to deprive your mother of a single bodyguard. 
Even though Lord Elliewood can very much handle his own just fine. I mean, he is a strong lord when, if you train him right. But he's still not Roy, for my fans that are thinking that. He's not. Trust me, he's not. If you just stick with me to the end of this game, you'll see why. I, I can't spoil it for you, though. Yes, I suppose so. Ah, great. More bandits. There's always bandits around the corner, but... Hey, at least they're not trying to kill Lin this time. But... They do want every last piece of gold, so I guess they're going to be stealing stuff out of that village. Oh. Is that Lowen? I wonder. Yeah. Yeah. It is Lowen. Sorry, I almost had to wait for the dialogue. Yeah, you must be in control of your emotions of all times. Don't join the dark side of the force! What do you mean I'm thinking of the wrong game? Okay, yes, I am. But you know what? Star Wars is awesome. I mean, most of them anyways. I don't like one that much. I mean, there are a few things that I really do love one about, but then there are others where I didn't care for Star Wars Episode One. I just... I, I didn't. Jar Jar Binks ruined that movie for me. Any scene Jar Jar Binks is not in, I love. Oh, so this is Rebecca, daughter of the Magistrate. Sounds pretty epic. Well, oh, that's pretty good. But the bandits are stealing everything, huh? Yeah, we can help out. Yeah, we must aid the village! Destroy those bandit bastards. Yeah, you just stay here and stay out of the way. What do you mean you'd rather fight? Oh, you have skill with the bow, huh? Okay, be very careful. Because, uh, you never know if a band can come behind and try to axe you or something. Oh, what's that? Oh, someone else offered to help, huh? Oh, traveling tactician! Yeah, this is where we come into play. Yeah, it, it's you, basically. It'd be whatever name you name your tactician. I'm Patrick, though, so. Yeah? Hi, Hollywood. Nice to see you again. Of course he knows. I was in Kalen last year, helping Lin out and everything. Uh, I want to call myself a fantastic military advisor, but thanks for the kind words, Elliewood. I, I appreciate it. It makes me feel better after I had a really bad day, you know? Yeah, I helped Lynn get save her grandfather and whatnot. And survived Lundgren... Oh, Lundgren... How the hell do you pronounce that guy's name? It's uprising. I don't care, he's dead. That's all that matters. Screw that, General. He's dead. Yeah. Well, I'm just trying to hone my skills and whatnot, but I'd be more than happy to help you guys. I'll lend you my skill of aiding you and telling you where to go and who to fight. Kind of being a sassy mom in that kind of way. Anyways, um, Rebecca, throw her this way. Um, the thing with Rebecca and Lowen is that I'm not going to be training either of these two characters. I have future archers and uh, cavalry that I do plan on training till end game. Now, unless you're planning on training him end game, and that's completely up to you, or just use him entirely, I mean, his stats aren't bad. I mean, he could be trained to be a really good uh, paladin in the future. I just don't plan on using him. I, I honestly don't see the point. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trade that iron sword he has. I'm going to give that to Elliewood, because Elliewood's going to need it. And Marcus, I'm going to be training him later, but he's already the strongest character in my party at this moment. Marcus is basically a character I'll be using if I'm in some deep trouble that I can't get out of without his help. Otherwise, for this whole chapter, I highly recommend you start training your lords. Because training your lords is going to allow you to make... That's going to make the game in the future a lot easier. If you try training, like, level 4 Elliewood at chapter 20, you're going to get wrecked real easily. And, and I mean it. You're going to want to train your lords first. I mean, if you want to use Rebecca, I mean, she is a cute character. Or Lowen, because he has a crazy hairstyle. Whatever. Go ahead. I just say, I recommend you train the lords. I mean, that that's pretty good. Remember what I said in the earlier part of the game? And yeah, that's Dorcas. I know, I know. Um, when I said earlier, if you train all three lords, Lynn, Hector, and Elliewood, if you have their combined levels to be above 50, you can get a special chapter. Or if they're below 50, you get a different chapter where you can get General Wallace back. I honestly like the... Ch oh, maybe I'm thinking of the wrong chapter, but... Honestly, the chapter you can get if they're all above 50 is far better than... Uh, shall I say the the chapter where you don't have them above 50 so I just recommend that damn he still hit me with 23% I, I just recommend that you uh, train 
Oh, Ellie Wood first. I'm just gonna leave it at that. Or, I just like Ellie Wood a lot, so I guess I'm just an Ellie Wood fanboy and I'm gonna train him and whatnot. Um, for visiting this village, actually, we can get a Dragon Shield from these guys. And boost the defense of the user. Which is a good thing. Um, uh, the reason why I put Ellie Wood in the Fortress is because I want him to have a higher evasion. Because the Fortress provides 20 evasion and a 2 defense, so that's pretty good. Um, as far as my other characters, I'm just gonna shove them in a corner. Not gonna worry about them. I mean, if I need to use them, I'll use them later. Otherwise, it's totally okay. And they're not gonna be attacking Bartre or Dorcas either. The only time I train Bartre to become like a fighter is in Hector's campaign because there's a certain swordmaster you can recruit with Bartre that Bartre must survive an attack by them. So he must be like a level 8, like 17 or above fighter late game. But that Swordmaster is really worth it. Otherwise, the Swordmaster will kill him and you have no chance. And it kind of sucks that way. I mean, not gonna lie, but there is a way to get around that. And that is Ellie Wood's final attack. Really good. I mean, I like it a lot. Ellie Wood knows how to kick butt. Don't question the Ellie Wood. This archer is gonna be annoying. He still has 50% chance of hitting me? Damn! I might have to use him like a vulnerary or something. Oh, boy. Okay, let's go ahead and attack this guy. Finish him off. Hopefully that uh, archer over there doesn't give me any more troubles. Oh, finally, our first level up in the game. Strength, speed, and luck. That's pretty good. The better, the higher the speed he gets, I'll dictate whether he can use, uh, whether he can uh, attack twice per turn or not. So let's go ahead and give Eliwood the energy shield and, well, oh, energy ring and dragon shield. I mean, you can give that to whoever you want. I mean, Re Rebecca's probably the best choice for that. But Eliwood's a close second to it. I mean, especially if you plan on using Eliwood quite a bit after training him, which I plan on making him a strong main character to help all the allies and whatnot. Now, of course, uh, these guys will not be able to kill Eliwood, thankfully. If you leave Eliwood in the fortress, he should be just fine. And Dorcas and Bartre, I, I don't plan on using them, so it's just kind of defending ourselves with... Uh, hopefully I don't get hit by this. Defending ourselves with the Iron Sword. You could use the Rapier, um, the, the sword Eliwood starts off with, but the reason why I don't do that is because I want to save that sword for, like, bosses and whatnot. That way... Um, Ellie Wood can take on bosses a lot easier and have a strong sword to do so. Because you're not going to find another Rapier until late in the game, and that'll be a long time from now. So I'd rather save that sword and, well, use it later. I mean, that's just what I recommend. Yeah, the Fortress does heal by three. I'm so happy about that. So I, I, I do want to finish off that Archer, but I'm not going to be able to. So let's go ahead and use an Energy Ring first. That's going to end Ellie Wood's turn. And then we'll use the Dragon Shield in the next turn. And then probably go get that Archer, because that Archer can get really annoying. Just like in Lance Campaign, the Energy Ring does the same thing. It increases his uh, offense, I mean, yeah, his offense by two, his strength. And that's really handy. Ugh, don't you guys ever give up? Now you're aiming at Mark, I mean, Dorcas? I almost called him Marcus for a second. Ooh, see how I can attack twice? That's what I want. That, well, that one speed allowed me to attack twice for the archer. Not the bandit yet, but someday he will be able to attack, attack twice, and that'll be for everybody. And that's what we're going to want. So let's go ahead and end our turn. Ah, oh, you would attack Dorcas. Well, Dorcas ain't going to take that. Oh. Okay, maybe he will. Because you, you missed. You missed, damn it! No. Oh, okay. Well, let's just go get that guy. He's a little pain in the butt, but... Nothing Elliewood can't handle. Hey, Bandit. Goodbye. Leave Dorcas alone. You're not worthy of attacking Dorcas. I know it's just me, but I don't find Dorcas and Bartray to be that helpful in this level. Or, it might just be me. I just don't find them to be that helpful here. Alright, so we're going to want to move... Is there any evasion there? There's a 10 evasion, so let's go ahead and move Ellie Wood in that house until I can get into the forest and have him use that dragon shield. 
Because that's going to raise his defense by two as well. Yep, we're from six to eight. So let's go to end our turn. And kind of work our way down until we get to that group of bandits. And trust me, Elliewood will be able to handle them, especially if you keep Elliewood in a forest. And then have him clear out the bandits with axes first, and then go after the archers next. Or vice versa. We already got, we already got rid of one archer, so that's good. We just have to get rid of the other one. And that might be a challenge. Thankfully, the energy ring allows us to take on the bandits in just a couple of turns. And that's what we want. And since their hit percentage is really low compared to Elliewood's, Elliewood's able to attack them for, well... Elliewood's gonna attack them every time and not miss, is what I'm trying to say. And the bandits will miss, like, pretty much all the time. There we go. Let's go ahead and move to this forest. And then end our turn. That way I only have to worry about a band or two. I believe I'm in the archer's range, but I'm not really worried about it. Now I want to make sure I get that bandit so he doesn't run away from me. Because I don't want him running from me. He doesn't deserve to run away from me. I'm trying to think of enemies that always ran away from me in video games. Oh, on Kirby Return to Dreamland, I had these little, these little ground characters. Um, they had like this key, and they ran away from me like all the time. It was, it was pretty sad. All right, okay, I'm gonna make this my last turn for the episode. Oh, that archer! He would, but he missed, so it's not too bad. Thankfully, Elliot can take out that archer in one turn, so that'll be nice once I get this bandit out of my way. Critical hit him! Critical hit him! Oh. I forgot he can't attack twice yet. Okay, so will we be able to take on the head bandit and save the village, or will we get axed trying? Find out next time on Let's Play Fire Emblem. Have a good day.